says we are watching the price of crude, which is below $80 the barrel. It is something we must discuss at this time. Jay Young, CEO of King Operation Corp, is joining us now. What are some of the reasons, Jay, driving the weakness? I'm not sure that a lot of folks were thinking that oil was going to move below $80 the barrel the way it did. What's driving that? Yeah, right now, it's, a, it's you know, the strategic reserves, it's all about, somebody asked me earlier, said, why, why are prices down? I said, well, there are more sellers than buyers, because it's all about buying and selling. And, you know, the reason why it goes up, because there's more buyers than sellers, the reason why it goes down. But right now, really, because of, because of inflation and because of, of the government strategic reserves about the elections, you're going to see prices that are going to stay down. I mean, they're not, they're not going up like they were before. Uh, but what the after effect of this will be is after the election, you're going to see prices go up. You're going to see a lot of, I mean, they're talking 100 to $140 a barrel. J.P. Morgan said $140 a barrel after the election. And it's all because, you know, we're in extraordinary times right now. Basically, yeah. oil and gas companies, public companies, aren't back to drilling like they were before. Before, they always said, hey, what's the best What's, what's the best thing you can do for high oil prices and get them down? Well, the answer is high oil prices because if prices are down, if people start drilling again and public companies start drilling again, they're not doing that this time. They're not, they're not back to drilling like they were. Either it's from the government or ESG or whatever the reason, they're not back to drilling like they were. So you're going to see oil prices that are going to go up, but it's going to take this election and so forth to get it there, Nicole. But you're not implying that oil is down. You, you mentioned the strategic reserves multiple times. Um, how about demand from China waning? I mean, we're seeing a complete slowdown over there. Wouldn't you say a lack of demand is one of the reasons that we're seeing oil lower? Absolutely. I mean, you're seeing lack of demand, but you're also seeing some oil come in the markets. But yeah, inflationary times, China, the election, strategic reserves. Right now, it seems like, you know, a year ago or, you know, right when Biden comes in, there's things that he did, you know, with the permits and all these pipelines and things that just didn't work in his favor. So prices skyrocketed, you know, and we weren't back to drill, baby drill like we were during Trump. But today you can see that, hey, we are drilling, we're not up to 14.3 where we were with Trump, 14.3 million barrels of oil per day like we were with Trump. We're still in the 12s. So we're not there yet, but you're seeing demand start coming down. And when you see that, you're going to see prices that are going to come down. But I believe, you know, like I said, after the election, I think we're going to see prices really go up into uh, end of this year and first quarter next year. Yeah, I mean, there definitely is a lot of folks, I think, in the same camp who think oil heads back higher. Um, another element right now is that you have a strong U.S. dollar, which, as the dollar has been higher, puts, um, you know, commodities to the downside, right? You have that inverse relationship. But there certainly seems to be a broad-based feeling that experts are saying that the low prices won't last. So what will drive this going forward? Yeah, you know, I, I do see I see I do see demand coming stronger, and I do see less oil in the markets because of all the effects of what we've had. Um, you know, I, I know they they talked about Biden's going to have to buy back some oil. I don't know where he's going to get it to replenish their strategic reserves, but if he's going to buy any of it back at eighty dollars or ninety dollars a barrel, he needs to do that, or he may just kick it back to the next administration and let them worry about replenishing all our oil that we take in that we need in our strategic reserves, but you will see, and I said, public companies aren't coming back. I mean, there's, there's four reasons why oil and gas prices have increased and they will continue to increase in the United States. And that's because of number one, you know, institutions are bailing out like your Blackstones. You know, Texas is really pretty mad at those guys for not participating and, and putting money back into infrastructures and drilling public companies, governments, I mean, U.S. government, a U.S. government, or per, for permitting on on BLM land. I mean, it's just a nightmare to try to get a permit. So, we're not drilling as much in the United States, and we can't drill 
in the United States. And couple that with ESG, and our supply is just not going to be there. So when our demand, when our demand comes up there, and we don't have this false, uh, false numbers or not the greatest numbers in the world in regards to what's what's driving it, what's driving the the numbers yeah. right now. Yeah. And I do believe it is the uh, you know, elections going in. And I do believe we're going to see that that stronger number that we're not going to yeah. have on the supply side. Our demand is going to go up, and therefore you will have higher prices. And I'm sure. I'm going to jump in with another topic. As I mentioned, China demand waning. Uh, I'm going to jump in with another topic that I'm sure you've discussed, being an oil expert. Um, what's going on with the European Union as they prepare to implement the sanctions on Russian oil? And that that's coming. And we're going to see more of that. And trying to fill that void may prove to be incredibly difficult and may also push price higher, right? Absolutely. Yeah, with Russia's situation, and also with Iran, don't forget about the Iranian, Iranian situation coming out right now. They've got two and a half million barrels a day that, that you don't know what's going to happen there. And if something does disruption and all of a sudden they take that oil off the market, you can see how sensitive 100,000 barrels or a million barrels or two million barrels around the world, how that impacts the price. It's so, so sensitive. And you have a lot of million barrels, two million with Russia uh, situation and this Iranian thing, man, you can tell that, man, it, it doesn't take much at all for it to go, uh, you know, to go higher and to be pushed higher. And I believe that there is, I believe there's a reason right now that it goes higher without all that information. You know, couple right. that with a bad hurricane, not the Florida hurricane, because that has nothing to do with, with oil and gas. And we're, we're doing fine uh, oil and gas wise with the situation going on right now in Florida. But if you see some yeah. Gulf of Mexico knocking out a million, two million barrels a day in oil and gas production, you do see prices there. It's going to go higher no matter what. But take in, a, a, you know, a Gulf of Mexico, you know, disruption, you could see prices go higher, very much higher in a, in a short amount of sure. time. Sure. Sure. You see 90? Do you see 100? Oh, yeah, Quickly. absolutely. End of the year, January 5th, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's gonna. It's. I think we're finding a big bottom right now. I'm not a trader. Know all those charts and all those things that go on that, that your previous uh, speaker was talking about. I don't understand all that. I'm just an old guy. But you know, talking about that, talking about. I think it's gonna find a bottom where, where you know, our supply and our demand is is right now where it should be. And even with the the false yeah. numbers, and I say false because of you know the government election. Yeah. And I don't know what's, I don't, I can't, I don't have the absolute 100% validity that okay. it is 100%, but I do believe that. So I believe it's going to find a bottom here, 70, yeah. 65, 70, 75, okay. because it's going to go, it's going to skyrocket. Yeah, and Hurricane Ian is seeing uh, to reach Florida this week. Um, you know, the natural gas futures have been uh, sliding, but it is something to watch closely. As you said, we'll watch that Gulf of Mexico. And uh, this really could change how we uh, view the price of oil. Things could really change quickly. Jay Young, nice to see you. King Operating Good to see you, Thanks. Jennifer.